Why are we trying to reach people to become members of our ecclesia? No. We're not convincing anyone to become members in our ecclesia, to become part of us. But we are reaching the world. Why? Because the world needs Jesus Christ. You need Christ in your own life. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 16, it says to, to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you and not to boast in another man's line of things made ready to our hand. Heavenly Father, may you now please bless your word tonight. Even those, dear Father God, who are listening right now is our visitors that need to know you as their personal Savior. I pray, Lord, they will understand why we are preaching your word, while we are reaching out anywhere in the world to be able to get the gospel out to them. Thank you, Father God, so much for this opportunity you've given to us tonight. That your word can be preached. This is pray in Jesus' name and for his sake alone. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Tonight, I'm going to preach to you on the subject I entitled, To Preach the Gospel in the Regions Beyond You. I'm so glad that, that this, the theme that uh, was chosen by MBBE, the mom tonight, to be able to emphasize to us this evening our work and our job, all right? To preach the gospel in the regions beyond you. Now, the believers of the first ecclesia in Jerusalem had a great revival. In Acts chapter 2, there you're going to see the apostles were together and then Peter stood up and preached the word of God to many of those people that came in the day of Pentecost. Many of them coming from different places in, in Asia. All right? In Acts chapter 2, we find here the kind of people that actually came. In verse number 5, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under the heaven. Look at that. Out of every nation under the heaven. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were, were, and were, and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. In verse number 8, And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born, Parthians and Medes and Elamites, the dwellers of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Prigia, Pamphylia, Egypt, in the parts of Libya, about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. The Holy Spirit of God gave utterance to the Apostle Peter. While the Apostle Peter preached in the language he knew, when that language began to reach for the minds and hearts of those people, they began to understand that in their own language. That is a miracle from God. But then we find after that great revival, in which in verse number 41 it says, Then they that gladly received this word were baptized, and the same day, there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. A lot of people came. A lot of people in Jerusalem got saved. And many of them got baptized. Many of them became faithful in the faith. But then they have become comfortable with themselves. They do not want anymore to go out there and reach uh, not only Jerusalem, but the neighboring uh, cities, the neighboring towns. 
In Acts chapter 2, verse 42, it says, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread and in prayers, and fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles, and all that believed were together, take note, all that believed were together, and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men, as every man had need, and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God, and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church, to the ecclesia, daily such as should be saved. They were active. They are winning souls. But they are just winning souls in the area in which they live. They don't want to go out. They became quite comfortable. They began to fellowship one another. They were together, the Bible says, and had everything common. And they began to help each other. They failed to do the mandate given to them. And what is that mandate given to them? In the book of, in the book of Acts chapter 1 and verse Number eight, it says that they should be what? Witnesses. Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me. Both. Not first, but both. It means at the same time, you are going to be witnesses unto me at the same time where? In Jerusalem in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. That is the mandate given to the first Ecclesia, and the mandate being given to us today. We have to go out. We have to leave our area. We have to leave our comfort zone. We have to leave our comfortable homes. We have to leave the people that are with us, and go out there, and go to the strangers, and aliens, and what? And preach the gospel to them. To the regions, to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you. They were scattered abroad. The Lord allowed persecution. You see, they were comfortable among themselves. And they don't want to get out anymore. So what did the Lord do? He allowed persecution to come. All right? And they were what? They were scattered. They went to every place, scampering to any place they want to go, perhaps going their own, to their own loved ones and friends far away from the city of Jerusalem. And because of this, we find uh, that persecution brought in a lot of violence and killings. In Acts chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, we have James, the second pastor. James, the second pastor, nakalimutan dito ng ilagay, the second pastor, he's not the first pastor, Christ was the first pastor. You see? So James here was the second pastor. All right? And he was killed. He was killed because of what? Because of persecution. And at the time, at the time, because they were very, very comfortable among themselves, they were scattered abroad. And according to history, according to history, they became faithful in establishing ecclesias and congregations in different places, reaching as far as India. Reaching as far as India. Those were the apostles and the evangelists in the book of Acts chapter 6, verse 2. Two to seven, there you, you, you ought to find out that they chose evangelists and many others. At that moment, at that time, Apostle Paul got saved. And he became the first world evangelist, reaching the Gentiles to whom he was called. According to Acts chapter 9 and verse number 15, Acts chapter 9 and verse number 15, but the Lord said unto him, go thy way. For he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings 
and the children of Israel. In Romans 11, 13, it says, For I speak to you, Gentiles, in so much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. So here we have the apostle Paul, the first evangelist, world evangelist, reaching the Gentiles to whom he was called. Now, I believe this is also what the Apostle Paul was emphasizing in our text among the Corinthian believers. I believe the Corinthian believers became so comfortable among themselves. They became good brothers and sisters in Christ. They were very convenient. They were very comfortable. And you would find out that if there's any ecclesia during the time of the Apostle Paul that became a very carnal ecclesia, it was the ecclesia in Corinth. Why? They became very comfortable. And you know what? That will happen to our ecclesia also. If we are going to be comfortable and convenient in everything that we do, we are very comfortable in earning good money, very convenient in, in, in living in good homes, we begin to forget our mandate. You know what will happen? Huh? We might not have persecution, but we're going to have troubles in the ecclesia. Members will give problems all throughout. Leaders will not live for God as they should anymore. You see? And it will just be any, you know, uh, in, in America today, Baptist ecclesia have become like Catholic churches. Well, Anna, no, they're very proud to call themselves Baptists. But what is it in being a Baptist? Nothing. They're not evangelizing. They're not winning souls. They're not conducting any invitation at all. They're not reaching out to others. And those Baptist Agassiz, who many years back were what? Were faithfully reaching out to others for Christ are not even reaching their own loved ones and friends among themselves. Okay, I don't know America, you know, when we traveled there many, many years back, it excites me when I would drive, you know, I, I, I drove all the way from New York up down to California. I drove for more than one week. And when you begin to reach Virginia and Tennessee and Oklahoma, there you're going to find in every mile there's a Baptist church. Every mile. And you're excited. Diba? Nakaka-excite. Nakakatuwang makita na, ako, terrible yan. Dahil pala mga Baptist churches dito. Wala akong makita ng Roman Catholic Church. O yun pala, ha, yung mga eksiyang yan, ay nagkaroon ng marami because they, you know, they were divided. Ha? They, uh, 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 they fought they quarreled, they got out, huh? the assistant pastor began to fight the pastor and he got out and uh, uh, began to build another work, robbed the other members of the church, you see? Kaya dumami ang mga Baptists. Hindi dumami because of evangelism. You see? Dapat ang tamang ekisiya, ang ekisiya ang sumusunod sa Panginoon, are growing and uh, growing with numbers and everything because why? We evangelize people. We reach out to others. You see? Now, look here. Apostle Paul founded the Ecclesia in Corinth. There, he met Aquila and Priscilla. I believe the Ecclesia in Corinth, the Despite their carnality, has produced a lot of good and godly men. They have produced a lot of good and godly men. But you know what? They refuse to go out. They refuse to evangelize in many places. They're very much satisfied just to stay there and fellowship and everything like this. You see? You know, they... Uh, When you speak of fellowship, uh, 
Especially in the Middle East, nung araw, pag may fellowship, palaging kainan yan. Ha? Walang fellowship na walang kainan. You know? I mean, the Bible says that we ought to fellowship with Christ in suffering. No. You're always fellowshipping with Christ in feasting. Not in fasting. That's the kind of fellowship we know, isn't it? Yung palagi nasa utak natin. Oo. Walang fellowship to work for the Lord. Walang fe- there's no fellowship to witness. There's no fellowship to win souls. And when you call them to come together for a visitation of Wednesday night, we're not even reaching 100 people here. You see? Not even reaching a lot of people. Uh-oh. Well, of course, I know that uh, many of our people are involved in the Bible clubs, they're involved in other things, they're involved in speaking the Word of God to others. But hey, listen, we should never forget the mandate God has given to us. There are three things that I would like to emphasize in my message tonight to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you. That first of all, we must be true to the command given to us. We must be true to the command given to us. And what is that command? To reach the world for Christ. To reach the world for Christ. In Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20, what did it say? There's the Great Commission given to us, isn't it? Huh? Go ye and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Ghost, and teaching them to observe all things whatsoever. I have what? Commanded you. We must be true to the command given to us. Listen. As long as I'm the pastor here, we will always be true to this command. That is the reason why some of those people who do not want to follow this command can go out and leave this place. You do not want to insult. You do not want to follow what I'm telling you. You do not want to obey God's command. Get out. Leave. Oh. A moment ago, you heard a young man testify. He testified about God's saving grace. He got saved, became faithful. Before that, he didn't care for the gospel. Yet he got saved. Do you know why? Because there were some people who concerned enough for him that he came to know Christ. You see, we must be true to the command given to us. Number two, we must remind ourselves of the men and women in the book of Acts and the Pauline epistles who became faithful to that mandate and because of that, evangelism reached our shores. Now just think for a while if Paul was not faithful. Just think for a while if Paul, in the middle of his ministry, quit. Just think for a while that when the Lord Jesus Christ went up into heaven, all of the apostles hung their gloves and say, I quit. That is almost what happened in the book of John chapter 21 when the Lord Jesus Christ was gone and uh, uh, the apostles did not see Christ anymore and there were nine apostles there on the seashore of Galilee. You know what Peter said? I'm going fishing. How about you? He said, listen, the Lord is not with us anymore. I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit. Listening to me? I'm going to quit. I won't continue anymore. He's not there anymore. I'm going to quit. I'm going to go back fishing. All of a sudden, while they were going back fishing, what happened? The Lord Jesus appeared. 
And what did the Lord call the apostles? He said, children, do you, have you caught fish? Diba? See? I mean, you know, you can be very immature with your own faith that when the leader is gone away, what do you do? You rest. Uh oh. You do not anymore serve God. You don't do things anymore. Wala na yung leader natin. Wala na yung pastor natin. Wala na yung preacher natin. Alam mo, isang bagay na kapakuya pag nawala ako dito. Eh. If I'm gone, Wagawalang iba sa inyo. If I'm gone, do you think that I'm going to see some of you people still coming, no? You're going to quit coming. Andito pa lang ako, hindi na nagdagaatin yung iba. Andito pa ako, ha? I'm still here. But you, you find some used to be faithful members who are not faithful anymore. How much more if I'm gone? Just like those apostles. And I'm so glad the Lord Jesus Christ appeared. So, ito yan, no? Secondly, remind ourselves. Remind ourselves that if Paul and those apostles and those men quit, quit, we will not have the gospel today. Do you realize that? Hey, do you realize that? Do you think you will be saved? Do you think you will know Christ? No, you will not. Remind ourselves. Amen? Now, if the MBB is not here tonight, where will you be? Huh? Or if I am not here preaching the word of God faithfully for 48 years, where would you be? Where would you be? Used to be lost out there. Trying to find out who you are, isn't it? Remind ourselves of the men and women in the book of Acts and the Paul and Epistles who became faithful to that mandate. They did not quit. And because of that, it reached our shores. 123 years ago, the first Baptist missionary came to the Philippines. He only had one intention. And what was the intention? Start Ecclesia. Evangelize the whole country. And for a while they did. And other Baptist groups came afterwards. All right? And then later on, after so many years, some of those Baptists, I can see, became quite comfortable. You know? They became quite convenient. And they were blessed so much. And they don't lack anything anymore. So you know what they did? Well, I'm going to rest for a while. Isn't it? We have... Baptist Ecclesia here in this country have changed their names. They call themselves evangelical churches now. But many, many years back, they called themselves Baptist churches. Well, they still have anniversaries. They still have Foundation Day. I was invited to one of them. I was invited to one big Baptist church in Bacolod City one time to preach. You know? And I preached the gospel. And more than one half of those people came forward to be saved. Members of the Ecclesia. Just imagine, members. What if we fill up our building with members and uh, we're not preaching the word of God anymore and somebody here, an evangelist, came and preached the word of God and many of our members would come to know Christ? What does it mean? It means we are not doing our job. So, remind yourself. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 14 and 15, it says, For we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure, as though we reach not unto you. 
For we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Christ. We are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Christ. Not boasting of things that are measure, that is of men, other men's labors, but having hope when your faith is increased that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly. Remember, we reach you. You're quite far. We're going to be staying in Jerusalem. Am I right? We're going to be staying in Antioch. But we went out and traveled. And during those times, you know, they don't even travel by chariots. They travel by walking. Today, our people have cars. We have communication things in this, in this country. All of them. We have all the means to be able to communicate to some about the Lord, but we're not doing it. I even joined TikTok. Have you seen that? Because I'm sick and tired of those TikTok I see. All right? That is nothing. It does not give anything. And they earn money out of that. Have you seen that? Look at it. I join it. Not for anything else. But even in TikTok, the gospel must be preached. In Instagram, the gospel must be preached. In Twitter, the gospel must be preached. In Facebook, the gospel must be preached. In the social media, the gospel must be preached. That's why even tonight and Sunday morning, he call it global evangelism outreach. Why? Because we would like to reach the world for Jesus Christ. To preach the gospel in the regions, what? Beyond you. I'd like you to take note of the word beyond you. It's not just that we sing that song to the regions beyond. You know? Well, siguro, we ought to add you to the regions beyond you. And what are the regions beyond you? Do you realize that uh, a lot of evangelical ecclesia has actually called the continent of Asia to be the 2040 window. 20 by 40 window. What does it mean? It means that more than one half of all of Asia has not been reached with the gospel. Do you know that in Asia belong, in Asia belong one third of the world's population? Do you know that? Huh? India now is the number one country in population growth. India has 1.4 billion people. China has 1.2. Indonesia has 300 million or more. You begin to look at that in all of the countries in Asia, what do you have? You have one, you have two-thirds of the world's population are in Asia. And more than one half of those millions of millions in Asia has not heard the gospel yet. I went to India, and my heart just broke. I mean, I was there in my hotel room. The hotel room was dingy and uh, dark and has cockroaches in there, and it's not even a good hotel. But you know, I was sleeping. I was crying. And I was telling God, Lord, if nobody will surrender his life to India, I'll go. I will quit the MBBE and I'll go to India. My heart broke. You see? When you begin to see all of those millions of people, you know, do you know that the smallest town in India has at least one million people? The smallest province in the Philippines, Batanes, only has about 12,000 voters. In India, 
the smallest town has more than a million people there. I'm so glad that one day William Carey came and preached the word. You know, a Baptist missionary. His ecclesia is still there in Bombay. But you know what? His ecclesia today is not preaching the gospel anymore. What happened? What happened? They became comfortable. They began to live rather than serve God. And you know what? When I leave this place, folks, I hope not. You will also be comfortable. And instead of you serving God, you're going to live for yourself. You're going to forget the mandate God gave to you. That's why perhaps the Lord is keeping me, keeping me alive, you know. I'm still alive even if I want to go home. I'm still alive. Why? To check on the people God gave me. You realize that? Oh. Today, the MBBE has about 300 works all over the world. Today, this Ecclesia alone has more than 95 congregations and care stations and their ministries around the world. We're reaching thousands. Do you think that's enough? And to our visitors, why are we trying to reach people to become members of our Ecclesia? No. We're not convincing anyone to become members in our ecclesia, to become part of us. But we are reaching the world. Why? Because the world needs Jesus Christ. You need Christ in your own life. We had meetings for three days, giving out uh, to pad help to a lot of uh, Constituent here in the 6th District of Manila. You know, I told Fog, Fog, you be the one to preach. You be the one to preach. You be the one to speak about the Lord. The other night, uh, hast hastily, I called a meeting, emergency meeting, among all of the chairmen that we have in the Santa Mesa area. And they were surprised how oh, yeah, I called the meeting. I said, I called the meeting just to let you know, just to let you know about the Jesus that I've put my faith in. Some of them will be coming to our exeat this coming Sunday. This morning, we had the graduate of uh, the, the uh, TESDA uh, training program. And these are not uh, informal settlers. These are middle-class people who just wanted to learn more about baking. Everything like this. And I tried to reach out to them. But the problem is, the very people that I have are not even prepared to give out gospel tracts. They are prepared to protect me, but they're not prepared to reach out to others. Kinakailang maghintay pa sila para babigyan ng gospel tracts yan, babigyan ng John and Romans yan. It must be an SOP that when I go out there and talk to people that you have gospel tracts with you, that you have John and Romans with you. That is an SOP. Did you hear me? Why? Can you imagine I'm going to speak out to them? What will I tell them if not the gospel of Jesus Christ? Iiwan ko yan na wala akong iniwan testimony of the gospel. We came to you, sabi ni Paul. Even if you're far away, we came to you. We reach out to you. And we're not boasting. We're not boasting because we reach out to you. We are just following the mandate given to us by God to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you. So remind yourself, 
You need to remind yourself when you got saved, you know. Uh, remember when you came to know Christ? Who talked to you? Why did you come to know Christ? On your own? Huh? No one come to know Christ on his own. The Lord will always use someone for you to know Jesus Christ. Do you realize that? You did not come to know Christ on your own. Hello? Hello? Remember that. When you begin to look at the unsaved people, I don't care what kind of race you're in. You, you might be black. You might be white. You might be Caucasian. You might even be yellow. You might even be pink if you want to be pink. We have to reach out to as many as we can. I've been telling our people there in the Middle East, you know, do not just reach out to Filipinos. Reach out to non-Filipinos. Talk to all of them. You do not just make a choice. Well, you're not Filipino, so I won't reach you. you, you this Filipino, I'm going to reach. No. Whenever you have the opportunity, whoever they might be, reach them, reach them for Christ. You know, I'm so glad. Uh, I, I didn't realize that how Arvin and Chat Ozamis can be so faithful today. He messaged me and said, Pastor, we want a Muslim to Christ. I said, disciple him. Disciple her. She sent the picture. Disciple her. And Arvin told me, well, we have been having Bible study with her for the last three weeks. And yes, Pastor, we will disciple her. When they first reached Finland right there, they were able to win a Finnish couple to Christ. Not Filipino. Finnish. The Muslim lady that they want to Christ is not Filipino. She's Finnish. But the Finnish, Finnish, F I N N I S H. Remind ourselves, folks. Then, thirdly. And last, the work of faith and labor of love is for us to become evangelists wherever the Lord will take us. Let me repeat that. The work of faith and labor of love is for us to become evangelists wherever the Lord will take us and be totally committed to the task of world evangelism. Going back to our text, 2 Corinthians 10, 16, it says, to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you. That's the work of faith. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3 to 10, it says, remembering without ceasing your work of faith, labor of love, and patience of hope, in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God and our Father, knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God, for our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance. As you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake, and you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word with much affliction, with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that ye were examples. Examples of what? Of the work of faith, of the labor of love, folks. Huh? To all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. Now, what is that work of faith? In verse 8. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God word is spread where? Abroad, all over, so that we need not to speak 
anything. Do you know how many thousands do I reach people, your pastor, reach people every week? Amen. I have devotion from Tuesday to Friday in this Emmy. Do you realize that? I have BMA Chronicles on Monday night. I have Impact for Life on Saturday. We have the Global Evangelism Outreach on Friday and Sunday morning. Do you realize how many thousands of people we reach every week? Do you realize that? Do you realize that? No, you don't. Verse 9, for they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you. And what? And how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. This is our message. Verses 9 and 10 is our message. Did you hear me? Amen. What's that? We are going there and telling them to turn to God from idols and to serve the living and true God. We're going there to tell them that one day Jesus came and died on the cross of Calvary. And that he came that we might be saved. And that one day, he is coming again. That is our message. Our message is that Jesus did not only stay in the grave. He rose again from the grave. To tell us that we can have victory over the grave. Victory over sin and victory over death. That is the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you are there right now, my dear friends. You are a visitor, whoever you are. Why are we preaching the word of God to you? Not to convince you that we are good. Not to convince you we're okay. Not to convince you to be, be, a, be a part of us. I don't even care if you don't become a part of us. Anyway, I don't even know you. And I don't even see you. Why would I want you to be a part of us? But do you know why I am preaching the word of God tonight? Even if I don't know you. Even if I don't see you. You know why? Because I want you to go to heaven with me. I want you to know Christ. I want you to be personally related to God through Jesus Christ. I want you to have eternal life. That's the reason why we are preaching the gospel in the regions beyond. The work of faith. Labor of love. Don't forget that. When you go out there and win souls for Christ, you are working in matters of faith. That is a work of faith. When you go out there and tell others of the Lord, that is a labor of love. Bernard and his wife, uh, Olma, were here for the past week. You know what they did? They came to me and asked, Pastor, we will not be with you this coming Sunday. We're going home to Pangasinan, and we'll be with you online. But you know what he did? He got a place and fed them and got all the loved ones and friends to listen to me preach. You know, instead of spending money for me to buy, to, to, to you know, to treat me to eat when I cannot even eat a lot of food that you want me to eat. 
my doctor just warned me today. Why don't you treat and save people? Amen? And tell them of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I know you I, I know you want to feed me and I praise God for that. I mean I I'm blessed because of that. And you're blessed too. But I would rather that you spend more money for the unsaved people or they would come to know Christ as their personal savior. Our marching orders as I conclude the message tonight. Our marching order is what? To preach the gospel in the regions beyond you. That is our marching orders. That is God's marching order to his ecclesia. Question is, are we God's ecclesia? Are we? Are we? All right. Then be faithful to God's marching orders. To preach the gospel in the regions beyond you. But we are being warned by the Apostle Paul in verse number 13. It says, but we will not boast of things without our measure. Okay, not boasting of ourselves that we can do it. No. No. But according to the measure of the rule which God had distributed to us, God gave us the mandate, God gave us the task, God gave us the love, God gave us the faith, God gave us the patience, God gave us the excitement, God gave us the encouragement. We must use that so that we can reach others for Jesus Christ. We're not boasting about ourselves. I would never tell people that, you know, uh, uh, to me alone, you're rich with the word. The Lord might have used me. I could be able to say, well, the Lord used me, am I right? I could be able to say, well, if, not, if, that, if God didn't use me, where will you be? But always saying, God used me. It's not you. It is God. Not boasting of ourselves that we can do it. But boasting of the grace of God for allowing us to be a witness. And to be witnessing, witnesses, boasting of the grace of God. But he that glory yet, in verse 17, says, let him glory in the Lord. In verse 18, for not he that commended himself is approved, but whom the Lord commendeth. What's the meaning of that? It is not commending ourselves, but letting the Lord Commend us. That is the work of the Spirit of God. Hey, listen. I do not know how many more years I'm going to live. To many of you, you still have a lot of years. But to me, I don't have those many years anymore. But I want my days and my years to be used to reach as many as we can for the Lord Jesus Christ. To be able to establish ministries where God will give us the opportunity. That's the reason why whenever we have men, men, that would go to many places in the world. 
oftentimes I would tell them why. It's not for them to be able to get money out of that and bring them home and become rich over here. But God has brought people to Finland, to Canada, to you right there in the mom, to many places in the world that we could be able to reach as many as we can for Jesus Christ. Listen. We have been faithful to the task. And as long as I can stand here and preach to you, we will be faithful to the task. We will be faithful to God's marching orders to preach the gospel to the regions beyond us. That's why we're supporting evangelists. We're not giving them big support, but we're helping them. We're helping each of them 2,000 pesos a month, and that's not enough, isn't it? And when they come over here, they begin to give their testimony, and God will speak to me because they have a great need. So what do I do? What do I do? Huh? I give them the results of their heart, isn't it? They don't have money for transportation, airfare. I would give them that. They need money for to be able to build the building. God will speak to my heart, and I would give them that. That is the work of faith and the labor of love of the MBB and of Benny Mirando Abante, Jr. Sana ganun din kayo. Diba? Eka nga na lingwahe ngayon, sana all. Ano? Diba? Sana all. Am I right? Sinortcut na natin. Sana hindi lang ako. Sana all. Tomorrow you might come to me and you can tell me, Pastor, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to Africa. What will you do there? I'll visit my relatives. You don't go there just to work. You go there for the business of God. Not just yours. To some of our members there, we have members in Qatar that are Africans, Nigerians, Kenyans. We have members in the UAE huh, who are not Filipinos. They're different races. Maybe you're from India, but you came to know Christ in our ministries. You got baptized in our ministries. And when you go back to your own country, you better be a witness of the Lord Jesus Christ and carry the banner of the MBB. That's your job. If you cannot do it, huh? you are an African, you are an Indian, you are a Pakistani. If you cannot do it, you're just you know, following along us and just being there because we have good fellowship together. Get out. Leave. We don't need you. But if you are committed, if you are committed to have the work of faith and the labor of love, then stay with us. Reach out to your own friends and loved ones in the country you're in. 
have that mindset. Di ba? Baguhin natin yung mindset natin. What is that kind of mindset? Mindset of what? Of reaching out to others for Jesus Christ. Our marching orders to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you. Shall we stand?